it's very transparent. It's like being naked a little bit. It's taking a chance. And it's also making decisions and having to show something for all your work all these years. Dahan, yeah, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, thanks. It's like saying, okay, this is who I am. I loved the cello from the very first time I heard it on the radio. The first time I played the Bach cello suites was when I was six years old. And I've struggled and enjoyed and loved every minute of discovering those suites over the years. My upcoming recording is going to be really challenging. This is Mount Everest for cellists. It's some of the best known and well-recognized music on the planet. I guess I turned 40, so it's a bit of now or never almost. If you're going to be a great cellist, at some point you have to conquer the Bach cello suites. <laughs> it needs an adjustment. Every time I practice, I, that's what we do. We're always looking for the right sound. And if something is not quite perfect, we have to go to adjust it. I did warn you. Hi, how are you? You cleaned up. No, <laughs> moderately. some things coming up. The main thing is we're recording in April and recording the Bach suites. So, but that's a month later. Whatever you've been doing with the humidifying, yeah. I think it's been really working. Okay. So whatever you're doing, it, it just keep keep doing it that way. Okay. What did you do? It was maybe a little bit tight, yeah. so I loosened it up a little bit. You can go with light bow and it's still ringing and speaking. I think it sounds really good. Okay, well great, thank you. Thanks so much, okay. I really appreciate it, bye. Bye bye. Every cello has a different personality. When you try to buy one, you look for something that will complement your own personality, maybe overcome your shortcomings. Francesco Ruggieri, he's a very well-known maker. He lived just outside of Cremona and he made this in 1673. This is a very expensive cello. It's, it's a million dollars. I don't let my husband carry it usually. It's, this is my baby. It's a lot of upkeep. He's a high maintenance buddy. 
But since I have my three real babies, he's taking kind of a back seat a little bit, but still a baby. Still my baby. Stop practicing, don't practice anymore. Be with me, play with me. I am not ready. <laughs> Nervous, um, but it's, it's getting there. Some days I feel, okay, I'm ready, and some days I'm like, what am I doing? Okay, goodbye. I'm gonna be a bad mom for the next few weeks. And Ball likes to practice at home and that's where the kids are. It makes things more complicated. Our kids are much better off for it, but it just makes Mbal's life that much harder. My older girl plays the viola and then my younger girl plays the piano and my son plays the violin. When my son Joseph was born, we decided to call him Joseph and my married name is Brenner. So we had the J and the B and so it was perfect. We just needed to add Segev, which is my maiden name, which I use for performances. And we had JSB, which is Johann Sebastian Bach's initials. Thank you. The Bach cello suites are perhaps the most important piece written for cello. They are a pure expression of what that instrument can do. It's Mount Everest because it's just so difficult and because it's the pinnacle of creation, uh, musical creation. And it's a challenge because it's so simple and so complex. It's so free, yet so structured. It has all the feelings, perhaps, of us humans, but it's very pure. Because they are such uh, pure music, they are an opportunity for a musician, a cellist, to really project their own personality, their own interpretation. It's a piece of work that uh, both cellists and classical music aficionados have opinions on. The architecture of Bach's music is perfect. It mathematically checks out. Everything about it is perfect, but it's also soulful. Every time you listen to them, um, there's something more that you hear. The musical ideas are very sophisticated. Bach was one of the most intelligent composers, so he's always going to be smarter than a performer, and so you have to rise up to his intellectual level and try to figure out what he wanted. How important is it to do what Bach wanted versus what you think sounds good? I think what sounds good is what he wanted. It's the same thing. Ball and I met at a party on the Upper West Side. I surveyed the landscape and was immediately drawn to her. Inbal received the American Israel Cultural Foundation Scholarship when she was seven years old. She began playing the cello in Israel at age five and at 16 was invited by Isaac Stern to come to the U.S. to continue her studies. She got a bachelor's degree from the Juilliard School and a master's degree from Yale University. And I hope you enjoy Inbal's performance. Today I'm just playing one of the suites, Johann Sebastian Bach's third cello suite. He wrote it in uh, around 1720, we don't know exactly, but he was employed by the Prince of Köthen in Germany. <laughs> Inbal has a very intense tone and then on top of that she has a technique that can only be described as like a thoroughbred racing horse. Absolute top-notch mechanical skills. <laughs> It's 
been amazing to me the energy, dedication, and commitment that Imbal has to doing this well. Wait, oh, it's nice out. Oh, it's so beautiful. Do you get nervous when she's playing? I'm never nervous. Good. You're not nervous. She's a pro. She can do it. <laughs> I was nervous today, my god. This Bach is hard, man. There is no surviving original manuscript, so the manuscript we have is by Anna Magdalena, his second wife, which copied the suites, and she did a, a great job, but uh, nevertheless there's a lot of mistakes and discrepancies. It's open for interpretation. You know, the reproduction is really good, but it's not good enough. So what I find is that little things like little dots I thought meant something, they turn to be dirt. And little um, slurs that I thought end at a certain point, they actually are longer and the pen, the quill pen that she used just ran out of ink. But you can see the traces when you look really closely. So this is it, but here we can see, we can really zoom in and you can see this is a smudge. This is a smudge where if I looked at the music, it might have looked to me like a, a note or, or a mark. There's a lot we don't know, yes, but we do know a lot and we should at least try to do what we know. I don't know, last night I slept five hours, which for me is very little. I need my eight hours. So I'm two days away from recording 48 hours. Yeah, I'm stressed out. I'm stressed out and I'm not ready somehow. I was trained in a very 19th, 20th century centric way. All my teachers were Americans and this does not really fit this. And, and it's a problem, you know? It's a big problem. The problem is not with the instrument, it's really changing your whole conception of sound. I'm most worried about not really getting the right mood, not enjoying the music when I'm there and playing. I think if I don't love the music, it will come through in the recording. And think of, there's a lot of things I have to think of, keep in mind altogether. Imbal's done a lot of research, a lot of learning, a lot of preparing, a lot of analysis. And now it's time to let that music settle and for her to really say what she wants to say. I'm very excited actually. I'm, I'm talking about it like it's some kind of a oh, but I'm, I'm, I'm pumped. Yeah, no, 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 I'm a pro. Uh, I've, I've recorded before, but it's been a while. I've, I'm a little rusty at it. Yeah, I don't know why I'm crying now, but um. Uh, we started recording and it was, um, it was actually, what's weird was that I thought it was going fine. I, I was pretty, pretty happy with myself, all in all, and, um, but the engineer didn't think that it was going so well. I think it really hurt me. Um, but then um, he pointed out to something that was really true that I just, I was still conflicted. I was trying to play a certain style that was not me. I was trying to not play in a 20th century or 21st century way. I was trying to come back 300 years in one month. I think I drove myself crazy a little bit. I was very tight. I was um, tight in my shoulder. The engineer asked me if I wanted to maybe wait. And I said, yeah, let's, let's wait. And I was so disappointed. <laughs> If I'm not doing this well, I mean really well, I mean fantastic, then I shouldn't just, I shouldn't do it at all. And I also send my husband and the kids away to my, my, um, my father-in-law's house. So everything was coordinated so perfectly and everybody was working so hard to make it happen for me. I think it made, it put so much pressure on me. I'm sorry. No, okay. I feel like I'm, I'm 40 year old and I'm like a little girl, you know? Um. Um. 
I wasn't prepared really. Um, here I was prepared, here not so much. I don't think I made the, the decisions yet, really internally, how to interpret some of it. I was trying to impose some ideas that were not really coming organically from inside. Didn't work. After a while you have to stop thinking with, with anything. I took a few months off. I had to forget about thinking and start doing. I also been focused on the business of music and I took some publicity photos for concert programs and also for the cover of the CD. I had some concerts I had to travel for. I went to China and I went to Israel to play some Bach and that was liberating in a way because I was on stage and that's where your instincts kick in. And You have to make practical decisions, things that sound good and work with you. You just have to be more true to yourself. Over the course of this process, I feel like my Bach grew. I'm feeling much more secure in my choices. I questioned myself over a few months and I came back to finding my own voice again. I'm really excited. I am pretty sure it's going to go better. Yeah, that's better, that's better, absolutely. Do it one more time, one more time. to be confident with my own decisions. I will show you three different ways that people play the prelude from the first suite. Casals played eight notes for bow. So he would play. When I look back on the recording and on Bach and my research, he's taken a more human characteristics. Before he was this unreachable deity, and now it's a real person. A different way of playing would be to go with Kellner's copy this way. Inbal has a very wide range of expression. She's very receptive to the intrinsic emotions of music. She does project it. And then comes Anna Magdalena. It goes like this. This is the way I actually also chose to play. Mm -hmm. Bach for musicians is uh, the ultimate composer, and that can be scary, but the music is something that should move us all. brought to Bach personally. It's hard for me to explain. I think that music starts where, where it's end.
Thank you.